The world's fastest growing economy is this tiny nation tucked in between Venezuela, Brazil, and Suriname, Guyana. This nation of about 800,000 people is going through a massive transformation. And the reason for that growth is quite simple, oil, lots and lots of oil. Outside the U.S., I think like almost all the oil is being discovered in Guyana these days. Guyana is really where the action is. Here's how Guyana's growth stands out compared to the rest of the world. Its economy will expand by a staggering 27% in 2024. The oil reserves are so vast that Venezuela's president, Nicolás Maduro, has escalated long-standing claims over the Esequibo region, which makes up about 70% of Guyana's territory. In addition to the threats from its neighbor, the oil poses other challenges. That's because while natural resource windfalls can create phenomenal wealth, they can also cause problems such as hyperinflation, social and political upheaval, and a widening wealth gap. It is leadership that we need that acknowledges that it is very difficult to avoid the resource curse. So how can Guyana toe the line between making the biggest oil discovery of the past decade and avoid the pitfalls that have doomed so many other petrostates. I've covered this region for more than a decade, and I was born in Caracas, where I witnessed firsthand the collapse of Venezuela's once booming economy, brought down by years of corruption and mismanagement of the world's largest oil reserves. Walking through the streets of Georgetown, you wouldn't immediately think you're in the capital of the world's fastest growing economy. While there are major construction projects taking place and oil executives flooding into the city, there's still a long way to go in terms of infrastructure and public services. Decades of little to no investment in education is part of the reason why much of the Guyanese workforce is unprepared for the highly skilled jobs required for the oil industry because of oil being found in Guyana, they have more opportunity because there is more company coming in and they need people to hire. They will use some of the local, train them. If it's a higher role, they will definitely bring other people outside of Guyana. About half of Guyana's population lives abroad because of a historic lack of opportunities in the country. But the oil transformation has lured some Guyanese back, like Sebastian de Freitas who trained up as an ROV pilot for offshore oil platforms. When I come back and I see how things are rapidly changing and moving, yes, I do want to be part of it. I do want to see people benefit. You can see that there's a shift, there's a change in the mentality of the average Guyanese in Georgetown. For most of the almost 60 years since it declared independence from Britain, Guyana has been one of the poorest countries in South America. But now, it's set to produce more oil per person than anywhere in the world. So the reserves stand in excess of 11 billion barrels, but that is fastly growing. But massive natural resource wealth isn't always good news. Countries that have discovered massive oil reserves are often prone to what is known as the paradox of plenty. This chart shows how, after the initial burst of growth when oil is discovered, economies that are more dependent on oil exports experience slower growth. That's partly because as more money flows into an economy to buy the oil, the country's currency becomes more expensive, making other exports also more expensive. Before its oil was discovered, Guyana's economy generated just $11,000 per person each year. Now, its GDP per capita has already surpassed that of Italy, and on its current trajectory, could overtake the United States by the end of the year. The other obvious problem when you get a huge influx of money is that there's a massive risk of inflation. A lot of people are stressed out because the cost of living is rising. You need to fight for a better wage constantly. In Guyana, this newfound wealth has a risk of further deepening inequality tied to historic ethnic divisions. The nation's Indo-Guyanese population largely occupies the top 10% of wealth while Afro-Guyanese and other groups are concentrated in the bottom 90%. The Guyanese have mixed feelings about how the profits are reaching them. Nothing, not, nothing, nothing, nothing is coming our way. I got, got one property, one. Uh, 
I want my eye on you. Yeah. I want to fear you. Those who are getting jobs in the industry seem more optimistic. Delroy McLean works at a construction site near one of Georgetown's poorest neighborhoods. From my childhood, I grew up right here on the wharf, so uh, this is my, my home, this is my backyard, my playground. Financially, I'm actually in a better position to help my family, to help myself better. We need leadership that acknowledges that this is a difficult society. There are cleavages in the society that can't be eliminated just by government spending. The country that has best managed to escape the resource curse is Norway. After oil and gas were discovered in the North Sea in the 1960s, Norway eventually set up a sovereign wealth fund. In other words, it took most of the riches generated by its oil and invested it. In fact, the fund now owns an average of 1.5% of every publicly traded company in the world. By investing most of the proceeds abroad, the money did not flow directly into the Norwegian economy meaning no hyperinflation, no massive strengthening of the Norwegian krona, and when the oil and gas do finally run out, the country will still be sitting on a pile of wealth that will ensure its prosperity for generations to come. So can Kayana just copy the Norwegian model? Well, not exactly. Norway was already a fairly developed economy when it found its oil. It had railways, factories, and a strong education system. Guyana is a tiny economy in the grand scheme of things, and for the most part, hasn't invested in that sort of infrastructure until right now. We're investing in creating new opportunities for growth. We're investing in creating opportunities for the expansion of the economy. We're investing in opportunities to give people a better quality of life. This school is just one of the many public works we're seeing being built across Georgetown. Essentially, it looks like Ayana has to strike a balance, invest in necessary infrastructure and diversification, but at a sustainable pace. The president says he's aware of the risk. We are very mindful about overheating. It has not happened as yet because of our policy formulation. The country does have a natural resource fund, but there are concerns about the rules governing it, which may be put to the test in the coming years. One concern is the mere size of the government, that it's growing. The economy is becoming largely an oil economy. That diversification is clearly going to be even more difficult than it was before. For now, it's boom time in Guyana. For me, I consider myself blessed because it's a bit of a right place at the right time, so I'm very thankful to the big man.